we thank God for another time the Lord has given us. It is only by grace, as you know, there is no one who can give himself life except from above. So we have to appreciate and thank God every time you wake up. Remember to say, Lord, thank you for another day. I would like to just give you some hints of what happened yesterday. As I said, loneliness is a feeling of not accepting yourself, not accepting your uniqueness. Do not expect somebody else to give you joy. You have to give joy yourself. Hallelujah. If you depend on people, you'll be a slave of them. But if you depend on God, you are the son and daughter of the Most High Lord. So always keep in mind that God has given you everything you want. There is no need of depending on other human beings. Depend on God and God alone. Hallelujah. And remember, we said that last night, if you were here with us, we said, God will not choose a spouse for you, but he will present to you, you will choose for yourself. Hallelujah. So you need wisdom from above. Don't do those experiments as if you're in hospital. You know, nowadays I heard somebody say, Pastor, I wish the church could allow us to have a time of being together for some times, like six months or one year, and then we, we just check if we can make it. That is adultery. You can't test marriage. When you get into it, you get into it completely. Hallelujah. No reverse. And don't forget this. Marriage will not solve the sexual desires. When you ask men, sometimes they say, these young boys, when, when I just ask them, why do you want to get married? Say, Pastor, I want to control my sexual desire. It will not control that one. I know there is a verse in the Bible which says that it will. But just pay attention. Don't rush. When you read the Bible, you have to go slow. Because you may think you understand it, but not. One day Paul said in the book of 1 Corinthians but, uh, chapter 7, verse 2, New King James Version, Paul's first idea was the same like yours. Then Paul said, nevertheless, because of sexual immorality, let each man have his own what? Wife. And let each woman have her own husband. So when we read that, we think that, oh, when I get my own wife, then I will control myself from sexual immorality. But I'm telling you tonight, it will not help you unless you have Jesus in you. Hallelujah. First idea of Paul was this. Then Paul thought that if um, any person, any man will have his own wife, then it will be a good remedy for, for sexual desire, sexual immorality. But second idea was this. Then after some time, Paul discovered that even married people are immoral. So he said, For you know what commandments we gave you through the Lord Jesus. For this is the will of God, your sanctification, that you should abstain from sexual immorality. Now, let, let's go back again. Read the, 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 the first verse. Nevertheless, because of sexual immorality, let each man have his own wife. And let each woman have her own husband. Now, the second one says... For you know what commandments we gave you through the Lord Jesus. For this is the will of God, your sanctification, that you should abstain from sexual immorality. Now, the first idea is that if you have your own wife, if you have your own husband, this will help you. The second idea says, no, you should abstain from. If marriage... 
could solve sexual immorality, no married man or woman could think of having another person. But wh wh why are they thinking of this? You know, if, if you find any expert in psychology, we take bachelor degree about for, for, for three years, then master's two years. If you are very good, you'll take PhD in three years. Now, let's count these years. Bachelor degree, three years. Are we together? Master's degree, two years. How many years? PhD, let's say three years. How many years? Huh? Yeah? Eight years. Let's assume you have experience of about 20 years in this field. Now, how many years plus experience? Huh? How many years? Now, the devil has more than 2,000 years experience of psychology. Now, wh why, pastor, are you saying this? You are dealing with a creature who has been dealing with human beings for more than 2,000 years. And then you think you will overcome by using psychological uh, principles. We need Jesus. Hallelujah. We need Jesus. Naturally, men are like boys. When they grew up, they depended on their mothers. So when they grow up, there is something called mother dependent in them. So when you marry, you look at your wife sometimes as a problem solver, as your mother. So listen, ladies, the way men are, when they are frustrated, when they're going through tough times, they depend on their wives to talk to them. It's like, it's like releasing the tension. It's like having a time of releasing whatever stress you are going through. Now, because devil knows this, what he's doing is this. Devil will cause conflict in the marriage so that you will never see your wife as a person you can rely on. And the same devil will bring another woman who will pretend to take care of you. Are we together? And then you will discover yourself, you begin to open up your problems. And I do tell men this. Don't share your wife's problem to another woman. Even if it's your mother. Hallelujah. Just shake hand of your neighbor and say, are we together? Don't try to do that. Because ladies will take advantage of that. And then psychologically, your brain will tell you that your wife is your enemy and your secretary is your friend. So slowly, slowly, you are married, but you begin to be attracted to another woman. And I'm telling you, it doesn't happen overnight. Step by step. And we begin by saying, but it's just normal friendship. It will never harm me. Slowly, slowly. That's why the Bible says, for you know what commandments we gave you through the Lord Jesus. For this is the will of God, your sanctification, that you should abstain from sexual immorality. You have to say no. May the Lord help you to get this, the following sentence. When you talk about sexual immorality, most of the time we think that we are talking about just sexual intercourse. That is part of it. It's just part of it. But the bad side of it is this. You open up spiritual doors. 
Are we together? You open up spiritual doors. I don't know about Western culture, but African culture, somebody can bewitch you. And you may find yourself, you forget completely your wife. And then you say, what is happening? But you open the door yourself. No one opened. It's you who opened it. If you allow this to happen, you open the door. And no one can spell, can put spell on you if you never open the door. So if you see them coming, just see the devil's agent coming to you. Avoid, abstain your, yourself from sexual immorality. Friends, that each of you should know how to possess his own vessel in sanctification and honor, not in passion of lust like the Gentiles who do not know God. We believe in righteousness by faith. We believe that we don't go uh, to heaven because of our good works. We believe in it. That is true. But we believe that anyone who is saved will show his salvation by action. Hallelujah. There is no way you can say, I am saved, but you do otherwise. When the king is inside, we will see outside. The, the outside environment will change. When the president visits us here, you will see everywhere the security system is, is alert. Is at alert. You will see soldiers outside there. Then you, you will ask yourself, what is going on here? They will say the president is inside. When Jesus Christ is in you, we will see your action outwardly. They say that Jesus is in me. Hallelujah. That each of you, each of you know how to control his own body in holiness and honor. Being available for God's purpose and separated from things profane. You know, when I was reading these verses, I discovered some few points. And one of them is this. Always... The Bible is talking about self-control. What is self-control? When you talk about self-control, don't forget we combined two words here. The word self and the word control. Then it is me who can control myself. Hallelujah. When you see this uh, music, movies, uh, I remember... When Pastor Mark was preaching last night, he talked about so-called subliminal messages, if you remember. Subliminal messages is a kind of message or picture they can display for a few seconds, but they are very sure that within a few seconds, this kind of picture or message will sink into your subconscious mind. And subconscious mind is the mind that controls everything. Let me give you one of the examples. When you drive a car for the first time, you are using your conscious mind. You know where the, 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 the brake pedal is. You know where the steering. You know where the side mirrors. You know all those things. But when you get into it for some times... You don't use your conscious, but use your subconscious. That's why you can drive while calling. Are we together? You can drive and talk to someone. You, you don't check where is the gas pedal. You don't look at it because now you are an expert. So the subconscious mind is controlling you. So if you give your child any electronic game to play, you have given your child to the system which will control the subconscious mind. So later when they see a gun, it is something they used to. They know how to shoot even before they hold a gun. Because they have been playing the game, shooting, killing. It is in the mind. The same when you watch this world music. Those popular stars, when you, when you watch their music, their so-called subliminal videos, they are there. Within few seconds, 
they will put nude pictures, half-naked people, within a few seconds. They don't need one minute, two minutes. That's so long. They just need a few seconds, two seconds, three seconds is enough. When, when they play that video, is enough to stimulate your body. So, what can we do now? You are the chosen generation. The royal priesthood. Hallelujah. You have to know what to watch and not what to watch. You have to look your MP3, your mobile phone, what kind of music do you have? Does it feed your spirit or it destroys your spirit? What kind of movie are you watching? Do you know anyone who is making any movie behind the movie? They have the target. They don't just produce move, just producing move for, for, for any reason. They have a purpose. You have to control yourself. Married people can be immoral. Is that true? Then we need Jesus. Hallelujah. Solution for this is Holy Spirit and self-control. Two things. Holy Spirit and self-control. I know when I'm preaching like this, there are some people who are watching over there. Maybe you are here, and then you say, Pastor, maybe you are, you are, you are, you are suffering from sexual addiction. Let me tell you this. If you have been trying your level best to stop this and you have failed, can you just set aside one day or two days to fast and pray? Hallelujah. And when I'm talking about sexual addiction, it's more than doing it, even watching it. Pornography. And all those things, they are destroying your mind. If you have been trying your level best to stop it, and you find as if they are controlling you, please set aside one day or two days to fast and pray. I believe in prayer than anything. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, I do tell people there is no way you can, you can pull me away from that. Because I have seen God performing miracles. I remember one of my professors who was teaching me counseling psychology. And then he said, Pastor Mbaga, what kind of method are you using always when you are counseling people? Then uh, I told him, uh, Professor, I'm using combination therapy. <laughs> he said, what is that? Psychology and prayer. And it works faster than psychology itself. Hallelujah. Just pray. And you know sometimes you may say, Pastor, but I'm trying to reach my pastors. I'm trying to reach so and so to help me. Yes, I know you are trying, but you will, sometimes you may not see them. But we have a greater counselor. The Holy Spirit. Go and tell the Holy Spirit, this thing is killing me. I need your help. And he will help you. Hallelujah. I said, get yourself before getting others. When you read the story of prodigal son in the book of Luke chapter 15 verse 17, the Bible says, but when he came to himself, he said, how many of my father's hired servants have bread enough and to spare? And I perish with hunger. You know, if you don't know who you are, don't get married. You have to know who you are. What area of life are you capable of? What can you do? By the way, it's, it's just because of sin nowadays, even women are working, but the previous purpose of God was 
Men should work. And women should just sit at home and taking care of children and cook for us. That was God's primary purpose. Men are provider and women are like incubators. You give them, they multiply. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You give them, they multiply. We bring food home and then they will multiply. When I was studying the brain of a woman, God made them in a special way. Sometimes I am tempted to say that women are second version of phones. If we have iPhone 5 and somebody have iPhone 6, which one is better? <laughs> you don't want to respond on that. <laughs> but it's this way. Women are multipurpose, multitasking. They can do a lot of things at once. While men cannot. If I'm typing something and at the same time you talk to me, I may find myself writing what you are telling me. But women can type something and then they talk to each other. They laugh. But if you are talking to a man and then he's typing Matthew chapter 5 and then you talk about Nairobi, he will write Nairobi. Because the brain cannot handle many things at once. God created women that way so that they can take care of our families. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. She can cook here. But at the same time, she is very careful to listen to the voice of the child who is sleeping somewhere. And she can feel the smell of beans which overcooked somewhere. But for us men, when we read news, our minds are on magazine. So don't ask me. You don't ever felt the smell of overcooked beans, for sure I will tell you I didn't. Boys and girls, what area of life are you capable of? Examine yourself. What do you enjoy doing most? What are the things you value more? Let me say this. When I see Many young Africans who are going to Europe and everywhere, I, I just look at them and then I say, why are you running from Africa? What is wrong with Africa? Did you know that we have everything here? The problem is the brain. If you will ever change your mind, you have everything here. Whatever you want is here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What are we missing here? We have everything. Now, why are we running away from Africa? Because we don't know that in Africa, we have everything. We can use whatever we have for ourselves. Examine yourself. What do you enjoy doing most? What are the things you value more? This is not about passion. It is what you value, what you, your interests and, and your traits. I do believe we have engineers here. Unfortunately, we know how to ride bicycle, but we don't know how to make one. We know how to, to fix the broken one, but we don't know how to make the new one. We are using mobile phones here. Everybody has mobile phone here, but we don't, we don't have any product from Africa. Maybe I don't know. You, you can help me. Do we have any mobile phone from Africa? iPhone? Samsung? Nokia? Do we have any? If your education will not help you to solve your society's problem, 
then you went to school for nothing. You have to solve our own problems. Question to unlock your values. You may write some of them or later you can see them. What is your most important, uh, what is your most important in your life? What are your priorities in life? Where do you find meaning? What change would you like to be a, a part of? I, I remember one day I was just doing this test or research. Then I, I, I called one uh, young man back home in Tanzania. And then I told him, if I give you about $1,000, what will you do with this money? Then he said, Pastor, I will go and find a nice hotel and sleep there for three days first. And then, and after three days, maybe I will make up my mind and see what I can do. And this is what I did. This is a practical thing. I took 20,000 shillings, Tanzanian shillings. In Kenya, is how much? Huh? 1,000. And then I, I gave to five young boys five young boys and then i said everyone go and do whatever you want i will come to see you after six months and when i came back after six months three of them they have nothing and then i asked them where is the money they said pastor the money you gave us was very little for doing business it was not enough I wish you could give me about 100,000 shillings. And then two of them, they showed me their own business. Small one. And then I asked them, where is the money? They said, Pastor, I'm selling tomatoes there. The other one, I'm selling onion there. And how much do you have? The first one said, Pastor, I have 50,000 capital. Hallelujah. And I have profit of 30,000 shillings. And the other one said, Pastor, I have 7,000 capital and 20,000 profit. Then I asked them, why your other three fellow boys failed to do this? They said, Pastor, when you gave us that kind of money to me, it was the capital I was praying for. So the problem is not the amount of money you have. The problem is the way you look at them. When you change the way you look at things, the things you look at will change. When you look at the land of Kisi, Kisumu, Nyeri, you have to value that land. Hallelujah. If you have any kind of business you are doing, don't say this is just a small business. That is not faith. Speak faith. This is a big business. May the Lord help us. What do you enjoy learning about? Friends, when you get into YouTube, social media, when you read books, what kind of books are you reading? Are they building your mind or destroying your mind? Myself, I have never read any novel in my life. Never. I don't have even any single book of novel in my library. I don't want to destroy my mind. By the way, Dr. Chid will talk more about this maybe later, and uh, Mrs. Finley. But if there is anything you have to protect at any cost is your brain. At any cost is your brain. I don't read any book. I don't watch any movie. Not only that, but I don't listen to any sermon. I don't watch any sermon. You have to be selective. 
not every preaching will build you. Every sermon must be based on Bible and Bible alone. Because the Bible will build your mind. How do you like to spend your time? We'll tell you about your future. What kind of people are you talking to? Do you enjoy manual labor or mental labor? Do you enjoy working outside or inside? But how do you know your traits? What does success mean to you? This is a very big question you have to answer yourself. Before you get married, you have to define success. Because other thing that success is having a good house, very good car, having a lot of money. But I'm telling you, there are some people with good houses, but they don't have success. We have people with a lot of money in bank account, but they don't enjoy anything. We have people with very good houses, very good bed, but they don't have sleep. How do you define success? Why, wh what do you want more of it? Which of your strengths do you enjoy the most? Which of your skills are you most proud of? I know in African culture, we are created to be soldiers. Almost all of us, we are fighters. So if we find any man in Africa who is lazy, we are about to form a special committee for you. A person who just wants to eat and sleep. Our parents trained us to be hard workers. Hallelujah. What are your motivations? You have to ask yourself. Before you get married, boys and girls, make sure that you have something for your own economy. Hallelujah. By the way, if we'll ever know this, we will change the world. May we stand for the word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you again because you've given us this time to listen from your word. For these three days, we dedicated them for young people. Father, we want them to know that you created them in a special way. No one is like another person. May you help them to see deep within and understand their uniqueness so that they can work according to the purpose of their presence. Lord, may you help them to see the way you see them. But tonight, in a special way, we are praying for people who are going through tough times in their marriages. People who are fighting against divorce. People who are fighting against different addictions. They are trying to get out of it, but they cannot. Father, tonight, we know that the Holy Spirit can help them to get out of it. We are praying for them. May you give them power and courage to go out of any kind of addiction. May you help them to overcome divorce. May you bring peace to that family which is full of violence. We thank you because, God, you are, do, you are going to do more than we pray. For you are our father. You are our counselor. You are our everything. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.